In developing a quantitative understanding of uh, solute transport and mixing in uh, soil and other porous media, uh, we need to elaborate a bit about the primary mechanism that uh, govern these uh, processes. So these uh, mechanisms uh, will, be, uh, will be the basis or the core of our, the way we model these processes in uh, soil. I'm showing here in the slide uh, different uh, forms of uh, contamination, uh, point source, uh, aerial uh, sources of contamination, but we should not think of solid transport only in terms of contamination because it is an important process for provision of um, nutrients to plant roots and to uh, soil microbial life that takes place in the soil. So we distinguish three mechanisms of uh, transport or mixing of solutes in soils, convection, diffusion, and hydrodynamic dispersion. Let me elaborate a little bit about these mechanisms. The convective uh, streams of water as they flow through the soil would carry with them solutes. This would be the convective transport. Even in the absence of motion, you'll have uh, uh, diffusion from uh, areas of high concentration of solute to areas of low concentration of solutes just by molecular diffusion. And an interesting mechanism not so intuitive uh, for mixing happens when we have streams of water that carry high concentration of solutes intermixing with the residence water with absence of solutes, and we call that hydrodynamic dispersion. In addition to this transport and mixing processes in soils, other processes may take place in soil that affect solutes. For example, adsorption of solutes on uh, soil surfaces, as you can see in the complicated diagram you have here on the right, or degradation of uh, compounds in the soil by biological activity uh, and so on. So let me uh, go in a bit detail on the uh, uh, various mechanisms. Uh, first is the uh, convection of uh, convective transport or the convection of solutes with the streams of water. So the flux of solute by convective transport, which we call J of C, is simply the flux of water times the concentration of solute in that flux of water. Uh, because uh, the transport takes place only in the liquid phase of the soil, we look at uh, pore velocity rather than the Darcyan flux, which we mark by J, uh, W. So basically the Darcyan flux divided by the water content in the soil will give us the average pore velocity. So we can uh, describe the convective transport of solutes by the product of the average velocity in the pores the water content in the cross-section that carries this transport and the concentration of a solute. The second mechanism that I mentioned is the diffusive transport. Here we don't really talk about a long distance transport but rather mixing and spreading of solutes or contaminants into larger and larger volumes. The uh, main process here is that of a uh, diffusion gradient or molecular diffusion uh, from areas of high concentrations to areas of low concentrations according to Fick's law. So Fick's law, if you remember, will basically state that the flux of uh, solutes by diffusion, J of D, would simply be the, uh, gr the diffusion coefficient times the gradient of the concentration in space. And basically we have a product of a gradient times the coefficient to characterize this transport. I'm listed here two values of diffusion coefficients uh, for uh, solutes in bulk water. Of course, in soil, the diffusion will be different as we have seen in a previous uh, presentation. The um, third mechanism of uh, solute transport in soils would be dispersive transport. This is a bit unintuitive mechanism for many. The idea is simple. If we have a soil with many different pore sizes, uh, streams of water will flow fast in one of the sizes, for example, as you see here by the V2. Basically, it's a larger pore, so the velocity of the solute carrying um, uh, water will be faster than in V1. And therefore, V2 will bring solutes ahead of V1 into the antecedent uh, solute-free water. So this uh, hydrodynamic dispersion uh, has in it two dependencies, one on the average velocity of pore water, V, to some power, and uh, a geometrical factor that represents the heterogeneity of the pore spaces and therefore the potential for mixing, which we call the dispersivity of a soil. In practice, the molecular diffusion and the hydrodynamic dispersion are almost indistinguishable. 
both of them operate on the gradient of solutes, so we tend to lump them together to an apparent diffusion-dispersion coefficient, as you see here in this uh, equation. And I'm also showing in this equation some experimental data of, of this apparent diffusion coefficient as a function of velocity. It has any two terms, one that reflects the molecular diffusion and one of the hydrodynamic dispersion, and in most cases, hydrodynamic dispersion dominates. So to summarize, the three primary mechanisms for solute spreading and transport in soil are convection, diffusion, and hydrodynamic dispersion. Often hydrodynamic dispersion dominates uh, solute diffusion in soils because we always have streams of water that would uh, enhance the mixing. Contaminant spreading by diffusion and dispersion increases the volumes of soil that may be affected by a contaminant and therefore increase the costs of remediation because you have to treat a much larger volume as, you, as these processes take place. However, we should not uh, forget the diffusion because it is the primary transport mechanisms for nutrient supply to bacteria and to other microorganisms in the soil.